Ah. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. Well, hello everyone. My name is Miss Mitchy, and today we will be continuing to learn about butterflies and moss species. And hello, Spoon. How you doing today? You know, I probably should. Let's see. There we go. I have hands. <laughs> and thank you for the lurk, Dean. I hope you enjoy your stay. Sorry for the delay. It just took me a minute to. My, my computer was not cooperating with me. But, yeah! So, today I have, I have prepared four moss species, slash butterfly species, that we will be learning about today. And of course, today we will be starting with the Atlas Moth. So, let's go! Okay, so... So... I really couldn't find any websites that gave like a good description of moths. So what I did was find websites that had good pictures of the moths. And I'm going to be reading from my actual textbook. <laughs> so let's go. Okay, so first one up, we have the Atlas Moth. So let's read the book description. Okay, Atlas Moth, uh, the family is Saturnidae, species is Atticus Atlas, and the Atlas Moth is the world's largest moth in overall size, although the Owlet Moth, Theresiana agrippina, has a greater wingspan. Distinctively shaped, its wings are richly patterned in various shades of brown. The sexes are similar. Early stages, the caterpillar is pale yellowish green with long fleshy spines, which has heavily powdered with a white waxy substance. It can grow up to 4 inches, 10 centimeters long. It feeds on a wide range of plants and in captivity it will eat willow, poplar, and pivot. And distribution occurs from India, Sri Lanka to China, Malaysia, and Indonesia. Nice. All right, then. And I also... Ah, no one caught the... F <laughs> it didn't tell us there was a Flareon. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. So, and... Oh, hello there. <laughs> How you doing today? Today, we are learning about uh, various species of moths. Oh, I love your name, Bulbasaur Tamer. That that is one of my favorite Pokemons. <laughs> but yeah, hope you have a good time. And actually, I'm gonna turn off the music, and I we're actually gonna watch a video. In the shrubs of the forest floor, a marvelous transformation is about to unfold. Atlas moths are emerging from cocoons that they spun from silk as caterpillars many weeks ago. It dissolves an exit by secreting a liquid from its mouth. Since an atlas moth typically lives for only a few days, it doesn't need to eat. So this is its mouth's only purpose. Over the next hour, she stretches her wings as they stiffen in the humid night air. With ruby scaled wings that stretch almost a foot and a luxurious fur coat. She is simply stunning. Now, she must put her beauty to the test. Her time is short, and each moment is precious. Her physical allure is enhanced by a pheromone odor that travels on the night air for many miles. The male moth has antennae so sensitive he can detect even a few molecules of the scent. The perfume is irresistible and will guide him to the female. 
little can stand in his way. And now, <laughs> that's what this that's what we're doing to today. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. Oh, and that, yeah, you can kind of see, like, the snake Full heads of fertilized on, the, eggs. on their The female on their begins wings. to lay them immediately. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Their purpose served, and energy spent, both moths will die within days. Yep. Yet they leave behind the chance for survival of their kind. Thank you, Nat Geo Wild. <laughs> oh, Battle Dragon? Okay. And he won. Nice. So there are actually a couple species of Morpho butterflies. So let's just start with the regular blue Morpho. Okay. All right. Let's let's see if we let's see if I can pronounce this. Let's see. Let's see. Actually, it just occurred to me. I can do... I can do... Alright, so that is its family name right there. And the species name is called Morpho Melanaeus. And... Okay. Make Spyro say it? Do I have that? Oh, I do. Let's see what happens. <laughs> I completely forgot I had that redeem. Nymphaliday. <laughs> I mean, that sounds about right. Okay, so Blue Morpho. Both males and females of this beautiful species are a deep metallic blue, but females have broad black margins with white spots. The undersides of both sexes are brown with a row of brown ring orange eye spots outlined with pale metallic bronze. Females also have a broken band of metallic yellow bronze. Blue Morphos fly rapidly through the dense forest and feed on the juices of fallen fruit. Males are particularly active, chasing each other in bright sunlight. They will even chase a blue cloth waved in the air. This device has been used by collectors to lure the fast-moving butterflies that are otherwise difficult to catch. Let's see, in early stages. The hairy caterpillars is reddish-brown with brilliant leaf-shaped patches of lime green on the back. It feeds at night on... Let's see... Spyro, you're up again. <laughs> Let's see. It's like, I know names, I just can't pronounce them. <laughs> ah, I, I should have taken Latin as a second language. That would have made this so much more easier. Okay, let's try it. Michiano says, Eric Rizal and Polkra. There we go. <laughs> yep, so uh, that is. I believe that's a type of tree leaf. Or tree in general. So, distribution. Uh, distribution. Widespread in South America rainforest from Z Venezuela to Brazil. Nice. Alright. And then. Switch over to the other book. Don't fall. Okay, there we go. 
Okay, blue morpho butterfly. Cell anatomy. As its common name implies, the blue morpho butterfly's wings are bright blue edged with black. The blue morpho is among the largest butterflies in the world with wingspans from 5 to 8 inches. Their vivid, uh, their vivid iridescent blue coloring is a result of the microscopic scales on the backs of their wings, which reflect light. The underside of the morpho's wings, on the other hand, is a dull brown color with many eye spots, providing camouflage against predators such as birds and insects when its wings are closed. When the blue morpho flies, the contrasting bright blue and dull brown colors clash, making it look like the morpho is appearing and disappearing. The male's wings are broader than those of the females and appear to be brighter in color. Blue morphos, like other butterflies, also have two clubbed antennae, two forewings and two hind wings, six legs and three body segments, the head, thorax, and abdomen. And that's what makes it an insect. And habitat. Blue morphos live in the tropical forests of Latin America from Mexico to Colombia. Adults spend most of their time on the forest floor and in the lower shrubs and trees of the understory with their wings folded. However, when looking for mates, the blue morpho will fly through the, all layers of the forest. Humans are most commonly, most commonly see morphos in clearings and along streams where their blue light wings are most visible. Pilots flying over rainforests have even encountered large groups of blue morphos above the treetops, warming themselves in the sun. The blue morpho's entire lifespans last only about 115 days, which means most of their time is spent eating and reproducing. And diet. The underside of the morpho's wings is a dull brown color with many eye spots providing camouflage against predators such as birds and insects when its wings are closed. The blue morpho's diet changes throughout each stage of its life cycle. As a caterpillar, it chews leaves as many varieties, but prefers to dine on plants in the pea family. When it becomes a butterfly, it can no longer chew, but drinks its food instead. Adults use a long protruding mouth part called a proboscis as a drinking straw to seep the juice of rotting fruit. Oh no, proboscis, not proboscis. The fluids of decomposing animals, tree sap, fungi, and wet mud. Blue morphos taste fruit with sensors on their legs, and they taste smell the air with their antennae, which serve as a combined tongue and nose. And threats. Blue morphos are severely threatened by deforestation of tropical forests and habitat fragmentation. Humans provide a direct threat to the spectacular creature because their beauty attracts artists and collectors from all over the globe who wish to capture and display them. Aside from humans, birds like the gem birds like the gem car and flycatcher are the adult butterfly's natural predators. And Let's see. And I also have a video for this one of a of a morpho coming out uh, coming out of a chrysalis. So let's take a look.
you know, I'm thinking I should just, I should just like confirm a subscription to a, uh, uh, to Nat Geo Wild's uh, website so I can have access to, access to all of their information at a, at a click. It would make my life a little easier. Plus, I like Nat Geo Wild. Let's see. So that was the blue morpho butterfly. Next, we are going to focus on the uh, sword grass. Let's see, where is it? Yep, the sword grass brown butterfly. All right, Spyro, one more time. Michiano says to Sifania Bion. It, it's probably uh, Tisifone Abione. Most likely. But yeah, so this is called the Swordgrass Brown Butterfly. Let's see, the orange forewing markings are an unusual shape and the prominent hindwing eye spots divert predators from the vulnerable head and body. Tis I vote? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> the underside is lighter with a yellowish white band across the hind wings and more strongly developed hind wing eye spots. Ooh, a slick cloth. Let's see. Females are similar to males but have lighter markings. Early stages. The caterpillar is green and hairy. It feeds Let's see. It feeds on sword grass. Hence why it's called the sword grass butterfly. And it occur its distribution is southeastern Australia. Okay. And also a little bit of Indonesia, it looks like. Okay. And to the other book. Okay. You know, why don't we just read from this website? Okay. Let's see. These caterpillars are green with instinct longitude lines, sometimes with a vague dorsal orange marking. Initially, the caterpillars are sparsely covered in long, thin hairs, but later instars are sort of fuzzy. The caterpillars have a forked tail, which is quite harmless. Let's see. And the caterpillars feed on various species of swordgrass, which are all tall sedges with sharply edged leaves. The caterpillars go to a length of about 6 centimeters. The pupa is green with a lo yellow line around the developing wings. It is suspended head it, it is suspended head down by a craymaster from leaf on its food plant. Let's see. The wings of the bu adult butterflies are brown with a broad yellow stripe diagonally across the forewing. The forewings also each have two eye spots, one large and one small, and the hind wings have one eye spot each. And here we have the underside of it. The underside are similar, except each wing has two eye spots. The, butters uh, the butterflies have a wingspan of, a si of about 6 centimeters. The species is found along southeastern coastal strip of Australia, from Gympie through Victoria to Adelaide, in which several subspecies have been recognized. Nice. And the subspecies Marlonzi is unique in having no pale markings on the upper surfaces of its forewings. Yeah, because I'm noticing some uh, some are darker in color. Let's see. And the eggs are pale green, nearly spherical, with light dimple uh, with light dimpling, and have a diameter of a 1.5 millimeters. <laughs> yes, yes. Nearly nearly every butterfly egg looks like this. They are usually laid singly, usually on the inner layer, inner leaves or drooping leaves of a food plant or on a plant nearby. Yeah, because uh, last week um, uh, I had to organize data pertaining to a bunch of eggs, and a lot of them looked like this. <laughs> yeah, we're we're basically not gonna know the species until they until they hatch. Well, let's see. Oh, here's another one. Okay. 
Well, let's get back to... There we go, there's a picture. Let's see, introduction. There are two... Oh! There are only two Tissaphone species, Abadone and Helena, both of which are endemic to Australia. The adults are distinctly marked with broad bands across the forewings and red or orange ringed os ocelli on the hindwings and cannot so cannot be mistaken for any other species. Tissaphone ab abiana is found in southern Queensland, South New South Wales, Victoria, Canberra, and South Australia, and there are eight named subspecies. Yep, yep, we just learned that. And habitat. This species inhabits glades and clearings in open woodland habitats at elevations of about 50 to 100, uh, 1,200 meters, according to locality. And life cycle. The egg is uh, bright green and globular. It is laid singly on grasses of the base of a tussock. The larvae is bright green emerald with a broad suff ah, suffused red stripe along the back. Oh, the other one said yellow. I mean, yellow and red are pretty similar. Or they're right next to each other. It feeds on the evening in the sword grass and hides by day on the base of a plant in a head downwards position. The chrysalis is bright green with a narrow yellow line along the inner margin of the wing cases. It is suspended by the crestmaster of the blade of sword grass. And adult behavior. The adults have a slow, lazy flight and bask with wings partly or fully outspread on low hemorrhage. All right. And the next one that I really like, at least in color. Ba -ba -da -da. And this is called the Alpine Argus or Alpine Blue. Michiano says, Lysenity. Oh, that was pretty close, like Lysenidae. And the species name is Abilina orbitellus. Let's see, or the Alpine Argus. Males are a deep blue with narrow black borders. Females are dark brown. The underside is light brown with black spots on the forewings and white patches on the hindwings. Early stages. The green caterpillar feeds on milk vet ah, vetages. And distribution occurs in alpine meadows of Norway and Sweden and also mountainous areas in temperate Asia. Nice. All right. So let's learn about this one. Let's see. The Alpine Argus is a butterfly of the of the family Lycanidae like, ah, <laughs> like in a high and a high altitude species found in the Alps, ranging from the French Alps to Slovenia and Austria, the mountains of Norway and Sweden, the Urlis and Himalayas, and across Central Asia. Description The wingspan is 25 to 30 millimeters. The male upper side varies from sky blue to grayish or steely blue and is unmarked apart from the narrow black borders and white fringes. The female is brown, often with slight blue dust. Uh, suffusion on the wing base. The forewings end in a very pointed apex. Both sexes, sexes are clearly assigned by conspicuous white spots on the upper, on the otherwise pale grayish brown or beige wing underside. The spots under the hind wing are pure white and lack black centers. The butterfly flies from June and August depending on the location. And... Now let's read through this. Oh yep, there are the white there are the white markings. Yep, I went with ones that I thought people would find interesting today. Yeah, because blue blue is a pretty common color in butterflies, and yet you will find it in different species too. And we haven't reached an hour yet, so let's see if I can find another interesting butterfly. Take out my markers out of my book. Let's see, let's do random. <laughs> oh 
<laughs> okay, I guess we're doing this one. Let me find a good picture of it. Actually, yeah, let's go back up. Okay, the one that I came up on was the common blue border <laughs> butterfly. Okay. I'll look that up. Like, this is pretty short, so... Yeah, well, I'll look that one up after this one. So... So, uh... Common dotted border, which... Hold up. There we go. This species of butterfly has two distinct geographical forms. The race shown here is from Western Africa. The upper side of the female's forewing is similar to the underside, but the hindwinged upper side is a pale salmon pink. The males of the East and South African race differs. The base of the forewings is flushed with pink and black colored markings on the hindwings reduced to black dots. Early stages. The caterpillar is black with, with transverse reddish bands. It feeds on the foliage of various mistletoes. Distribution. Very common in woodland, savanna, parks, and gardens throughout South Africa and Sahara. And let's read this. Let's see. Uh, Mylothorus agathena, the common dotted border, is a pretty white and orange butterfly restricted to southern Africa. They're attracted to native herbace herbaceous flowering plants and bushes. The caterpillars feed and the tapanetheus and oyas. O Osiris. Oh. Let's see, the adults are also attracted to the mineral-rich waters around the edges of muddy puddles. They're distasteful to birds, likely because of the plants they eat when caterpillars. They are slow-flying butterflies seen in October to fe and February into April. Nice. Oh, let's read more about their wingspan. Their wingspan is 50 to 16 millimeters for males and 52 to 65 milliliters for females. Uh, no, not milliliters, millimeters for females. The slow-flying adults are wing are on wing year-round, with peaks in October and from late February to April. The gregarious larvae feed on the Tapanatheus foliage. Okay. Slugma, okay. So let's do... There we go. Does it did it look like this? Let's see. Okay, so yeah, so yeah, wave sphinx moss. Okay. Let's see. The four wings of this large, strong flying Oh, it's a type of hawk moth. Okay. Are patterned with various shades of gray and white and grayish white. Females are larger than males. Or best you can figure. Yeah, yeah, just the, the trouble little similar looking similar looking bugs. And early stages. The large snake-like caterpillar is ringed with orange and black and has black dotted orange back shields behind the head and near the tail. It feeds on frangili or plumeria and jasmine. Distri uh, let's see. Distribution from Paraguay to West Indies and the southernmost USA. Okay, that makes sense. And? Let's see. Spyro, you're up. You're gonna tell us the species name. Michiano says. Pseudosphinx Tetrio. Oh, that was pretty close. Nice. <laughs> okay. And what was the other one? The American Snout? Oh, hey! What do you know? It's right next to the Blue Morpho. <laughs> nice picture of it. <laughs> there we go. The American snow. 
Let's see. Although this makes it easy. I can just copy. So yeah, we're gonna make it a thing now. Spyro's gonna read the scientific names of all the animals. Michiano says, Libithian incarnate. <laughs> they they kind of said it a little fast, but that's okay. And what a snout it has. Yeah, yeah, apparently. <laughs> Let's see. Snout butterfly. The distinctively notched and angular shape of the forewings of this species and the more gently scalloped hindwings distinguish the snout butterfly from all other North American butterflies. The undersides of the forewings are lighter than the uppersides, while the hindwings are speckled with grayish brown markings. The sexes are similar and snout butterflies overwint as a overwinter as adults. Then the early stages. The caterpillar is dark green with yellow stripes. It is known to feed on a silk. Aceltis. And distribution. This butterfly occurs in the light woodland and hilly subland areas, extending from Paraguay to southern U.S. and migrating northward as far as Nebraska. Nice. Well, hey, we <laughs> hey, I actually, I think that's pretty interesting. Like, I like, I love migratory, uh, migratory butterflies because they retain, even though their lifespans are so short, they still retain all of that information from tens and hundreds of thousands of years ago. I just, I love that. And I love, I love learning in general. And yeah, so I think we are going to end it there for today because it has been, yep, it has been an hour. So I do want to thank you guys for joining me tonight, uh, not tonight, afternoon. <laughs> I still need to get used to that. But yeah, thank you for joining me today, Spoon. Let's go find somebody to raid. All right, let's see. Let's get this raid started. Okay, so I want to thank everybody who came today, and thank you, Spoon, for being a chatter today. I appreciate ya, and for introducing us to a couple of other species. So next plan stream will be later tonight. I will be playing uh, more Pokemon TCG. So I want to thank all you guys so much for watching, and I will see you later. Bye-bye!